Hi, Primary 2. I'm going to read the story Fussy Frankie, which is in David Williams' The World's Worst Children, number two. It's quite a long one, so I'm going to do this in two parts. You'll get one part, and then I'll stop, and then I'll send the other part. Okay. Fussy Frankie. Frankie was fussy. The little boy refused to eat any fruit or vegetables whatsoever. If any found their way to his dinner plate, he would get rid of them immediately. Brussels sprouts would be flicked across the kitchen. Broccoli would be flung over his shoulder. Tomatoes would be splatted on the ceiling. Aubergines would be thrown back at whoever had the misfortune of serving them up. Rhubarb was the boy's absolute worst nightmare. Like a lot of fussy eaters, he'd never actually tasted the food he hated the most, but to Frankie, it looked and smelled yucksome. Whenever he came face to face with a piece of rhubarb, he took great pleasure in flushing it down the toilet. Goodbye, ranky danky rhubarb, and good riddance! Ha ha! The boy would say as he watched it swirl down the pan. Every morning at breakfast time in the kitchen, Frankie's mum would plead with him. You need to eat your five a day, Frankie. The pair lived in a little house on the far side of town. Casting a shadow over the family home was a huge nuclear power, plant, power station that glowed in the dark and hummed all day long. Ma, I do get me five a day, snapped the boy. Crisps, biscuits, chocolate, cake and biscuits. You counted biscuits twice. That's because I have two packets a day. Duh. Frankie's daily menu looked like this. Breakfast. A bowl of crisps with ice cream on top. Mid-morning snack. Sweets sprinkled with sugar. Lunch. Main course. A packet of chocolate biscuits dipped in chocolate sauce. And for pudding, a deep fried cake. Oh my goodness. For afternoon tea, a packet of double chocolate biscuits washed down with a glass of treacle. Dinner, main course, a chocolate egg on a bed of crisps. Pudding, a block of fudge smothered in fudge sauce. Bedtime snack, a bag of toffees to chew on. The boy's mum was sick with worry about her son. Because of his terrible diet, Frankie was becoming bigger, paler and spottier by the day. So mum had decided to create a food revolution in her house. Her son was going to eat fresh fruit and vegetable at every meal, whether he liked it or not. I'm starving. What's for brekkie, ma? If it's not chocolate, then I'm putting myself up for adoption. It's better than chocolate. Just you wait and see. The lady then whisked out a plate she'd been hiding under a tea towel. Ta-da! She exclaimed excitedly. What's this, ma? Frankie demanded. It's a grapefruit. A what fruit? A grapefruit. It's really delicious. Have a try. Frankie looked at the thing with contempt. He leaned his face down and took a sniff of it. Ugh, it's punky punky. It smells fresh. It smells disgustable. I ain't eating that, you cruel old hagwitch. Give me some chocolate now. The lady was hurt by her son's outburst, but tried to stay strong. No, she replied. Frankie couldn't believe his ears. What do you mean, no? I want chocolate. No, Frankie, grapefruits are yummy, I promise you. They taste sweet, just like a sweet. Come on now, be a good boy. The lady tried to feed her son a segment with a spoon, as if he was a baby. He struggled for a while, but Mum persevered and eventually got the piece of fruit in her son's mouth. As soon as she had, he spat it back at her. Splat! It hit the boy's mum right on the nose. Ah! screamed Frankie. That tasted like pukey plops! As the poor lady peeled the piece of grapefruit from her nose, she realised she might have to try a different approach with her son. Bribery. Look, Frankie, she began, if you eat the grapefruit, you can have one square of chocolate from this giant bar here. Mum always had a giant bar of chocolate on standby in case her son became angry. The boy was craving chocolate. He hadn't had any for a matter of hours. However, there was no way he was going to eat that yucky mucky fruit thingamy, whatever it was called. A wicked plan crossed his mind. 
All right, Ma, you are right. I should have had me five a day. I'll eat it. Good boy, exclaimed Mum. Oh, Frankie, I'm so pleased. Go ahead the... Nah, he snapped. You need to get the chocolate out first. Oh, yes, yes, of course. As soon as Mum turned around, Frankie picked up the grapefruit and hurled it out of the window. It flew right at the nuclear power station. The grapefruit must have hit something as the lights on the power station flickered for a moment. Mum then turned back with the square of chocolate in her hand. You finished it! Yeah, Ma, lied Frankie. The lady inspected the bowl. You ate the skin as well. Did I? Yes, it's very tough, the skin of a grapefruit. Yeah, well, that's the best bit, Ma. Now give me that chocolate now. I said, give me that chocolate now. The lady was about to hand her son a square of chocolate when he ate it out of her hand like a dog. Ow, screamed Mum. You bit my finger. It was in the way, Ma. Now what's next? Feeling she was on a roll after Frankie had eaten up his grapefruit, skin and all, she tried the next fruit. A banana. It was the same routine. Frankie tricked his mum into thinking he'd eaten it in exchange for another square of chocolate. Again, the banana was flung out of the window. However, because it was bent, the banana returned to him like a boomerang, banging Frankie on the head. So he threw it again. Underarm this time. And once again, boo, it hit the power station. The hum became a loud grinding noise. Mum turned back to see the plate was empty. Frankie, you ate the banana skin. Yeah, Ma, it was yummy-tastic. Chocolate now. Yes, of course. This time, the lady wasn't taking any chances with her fingers. She'd become quite attached to them. So she threw the square of chocolate up into the air so her son could catch it in his mouth, the way one might throw a fish to a killer whale. Having had incredible success with the grapefruit and banana, the lady thought it was time to become more adventurous. So this morning's breakfast was to be rounded off with an exotic fruit, a pineapple. Once again, Frankie managed to convince his mum that he'd eaten it whole when he'd lobbed it out of the window. Once again, it reached the power station, causing some kind of siren to go off in there. What a super breakfast, Frankie, said mum brightly. We are on a roll now. A little later that day, it was time for lunch. Frankie's mum felt she should try her son on some vegetables. A cauliflower was the first one to be flung out of the window as soon as Mum's back was turned. He threw it like one might throw a shot putt. The boy was given another square of chocolate. Next, a platoon of peas was flicked one by one off the boy's plate. Bing, bing, bing. They all flew out of the window straight towards the power station. This was fun. And the reward was more chocolate. Pudding was a pear. The weird, misshapen, easily bruised apple type thing was, of course, flung out the window and it disappeared somewhere inside the power station. Mum was worried that because her son was being so good eating all his fruit and vegetables, she was soon going to run out of chocolate. The giant bar was nearly all gone. Dinner was a cabbage. This is a vegetable even people who like vegetables don't like. Even other vegetables shun the cabbage and won't be friends with it. Cabbage is a vegetable that gives other vegetables a bad name. Yet as soon as Mum's back was turned to break off another square of chocolate, Frankie appeared to gobble up the whole cabbage in one go. And we're going to pause there, and I will record the next part and release it very soon. I wonder what is going to happen.